Welcome everyone. So my name is Samran Ajwani and I am on the Microsoft Search Programmability and Copilot Extensibility team. Pretty long name, but I'll kind of explain, you know, what that is. So when we take a look at Microsoft Search, one second, okay. So when we take a look at our Microsoft Search solutions, um, we can see all the way from our pro code side to our low code side. So on our pro code side, we have our Microsoft Graph, which is a way to bring APIs and any external content to 1P and 3P. So we can see where you can extend your M365 experiences, you can build your own experiences all using Microsoft Graph. You can also bring in any external data using connectors. And so this is uh, more of our pro code side of what our team works on. And this is all these solutions catered to you guys to um, search um, through your data. But we also have a low code side as well. And this is where the Microsoft Search Connector comes in. So the Microsoft Search Connector is a way to search through all of your M365 data sets. So we have files, we have messages, people, any external content through graph connectors as well. And so this surfaces through Power Apps and Power Automate. So where you'll be able to see these connectors are through Power Apps, which are just ways to low code, no code ways to create enterprise applications as well as Power App, Power Automate, which is a way to create your workflows. Um, and so we have a link down here called aka.ms slash search in power, which takes you to our uh, Microsoft Search documentation. Um, currently, the search connector is in preview, but I'm going to be showing you guys a live demo of how it works, some of our plans for the future um, as well. And yeah, any questions that you guys have while I'm taking you through the demo, please um, drop them in the chat. And so this is a little bit more about the search connector. So as I mentioned before, there's four different entities that we support right now. And all of these entities come from um, M365 um, data. So files will come from your SharePoint and OneDrive. Messages comes from your Teams. And so each different entity type has its own like content sources. And we're also going to kind of see that when I take you through the demo as well. So if you think um, this is pretty interesting, there is a QR code. So please, um, if you want to learn more, um, get in contact with me and um, you can fill out this form, pretty quick form. It should take a minute or two. Um, and we can kind of understand more about your use cases. I will also show, showcase this QR code at the end of the call as well, um, in case anyone has missed it. Okay, so now I'm gonna share another screen, um, take you to the live demo. Give me a minute for that. So this is the documentation that I had mentioned before. This is public, and so you're able to just see um, what the search connector is. So um, it's available in all of these products and regions. Um, we have our contact URL, email, and everything. And so the prerequisites to access this search connector, um, it just requires an M365 license because you do need to access all of your uh, workloads like Exchange, SharePoint, and Teams, as I mentioned before. And then in terms of credentials, all of the authentication has been built into the search connector. So you'll see when you go and save and test the connector and run it, run it, it will already be um, authenticated and make sure that um, it's really easy and able to use without any additional authentication steps. And yeah, so that's a little bit about the documentation. Currently, as I did mention, it is in preview. So that means that um, you can look at this public documentation as well in terms of what the preview features are and then how to enable them. I will share these links in the chat as well. So let's get started on what the search connector looks like right now. So if we are able to search through, I'm gonna be taking you through a um, couple different tabs just because um, we are still in the development phase and we are pushing our new like preview version out. So like not everything is updated right now. So there's a few like test environments and everything. So I'll try to make this as smooth as possible. So um, our new name for our connector previously, it was Microsoft Search and now it is M365 Search. So this is our new preview version. So kind of think of it as like V2. Um, and this is our new icon and how it looks. So whenever you go inside Power Automate, just search for the connector. This is what you will see. 
And this is how it looks right now. So there are four different actions that you can search through. There's search files. For each entity, we have one different action. And so in this case, what I'm showing you guys is searching for your files. Um, you can totally ignore this very token. It is for testing purposes only. And so we have our search input. So these are the different um, information that users will have to enter. So when you are running your flow or using this connector, there's a few different information that you have to enter. So one of them is your search phrase you can think of. Um, in this case, I put the word plan because, for example, I want to search through files um, from the search phrase plan. So anything that pops up with the search phrase plan is what I'm interested in. Um, number of results is how many results you want to show up and start from result number is just the index starting number of the results. So if you want to start from the 10th result, go to the 20th, that's totally fine. And it's just more useful for pagination and things like that. And we have our relevance. So if you want to sort by relevance, most of the time it's default on. And so for files, um, as I mentioned before, we have our different content sources. So for files, it can come from SharePoint or OneDrive Business. And it's really up to you to decide if you want all the content sources that are available, if you only want your files to come from SharePoint, for example. So you're able to go and like edit them and delete them um, and kind of pick and choose, customize to whatever um, solutions you want. So scrolling a little bit down, we have these output fields. So these are fields for each entity type that we have available. So when you um, think of a search running and then you see the results come back, what um, different fields do you want showing up for that one file? So what details do you want coming out of it? So if you want your description for the file to show up, your file name, and stuff like that. So for each different entity, we have around 25 to 30 different fields. And you can also create any custom fields as well. So as you can see below, there's um, five that show up, but there are a lot of different fields we have access to. And so whatever you want to show up, I'm just going to keep these five that we have. So our file name, path, rank, and things like that. And then so filtering is something that's in development. So I will show you in one of our test connectors how that would look. Um, so this is how it looks. So this is our filters field. So for each for a few different of the output fields that we have, we're able to filter um, our files. So say instead of you don't want to search through all the files you have access to in every single SharePoint site or every single SharePoint file, if you want to scope it down to a specific path, if you want to scope your files down to like a file name containing the specific phrase, you're able to do that. So this is a new capability that we have added from our version one, which is filtering. And so in this case right now, the example I have chosen is I want all of my files to come from this um, SharePoint URL. So what, how you would do that is just choose your output field. You have different operators. For example, if you do have like a qualitative field, um, a quantitative field, sorry, then you're able to put on any of these like quantitative operators. So if you want, for example, your um, date last received of a Teams message to be less than this specific date or greater than this date, then you're able to put those in the operators as well. Um, you can kind of, you know, play around with that as well. Um, but yeah, let me just make sure that I have the most updated token. My token does tend to expire. I don't even know the how often it expires, but I just want to make sure when I run this that the token, the authentication is not the issue. So give me probably 10 seconds to get the new token. All right. So I will run both of these just to show you how the first one will, they both will return results, but the second one will return results with filtering. Um, so let's just test these out. Hopefully both of them run at the same time. Uh, I've only done one at a time, but it should work. So this is where the authentication happens. The built-in authentication that already happens is when the user first clicks run the flow. Um, and then in this case, we've just manually triggered the flow, but you're able to also look at ways where you have like a power app. And for example, if you have like a display table inside your power app and you have like a search um, box and then a search button, when you click that button, you're able, for example, that can trigger like 
the run of this flow. So that's just one example of use, how a user can use it inside um, a Power App as well. So we can see our search files has returned the default of 10 results. We've had it both from SharePoint and OneDrive. And this is our output. So we have our five different fields, output fields that we wanted displayed. Um, we can see since we wanted to search with the search phrase plan, we'll see that show up here. So um, how this works for like access, like access purposes is whoever is running the flow, that's um, all the data that will show up to them. So I have access to all of these files. So this is how all of these files will show up to me. So it's basically the same privacy security principles that we have in Microsoft Search. It's all built in as well. Um, so it's up to the end user who is running the flow. And then in terms of the filtering, if we wanted to see how all of the files are scoped. So in this case, we only had, I only had a size of one. So we can see our path is scoped to this specific um, SharePoint site. So that's a little bit about the results. Um, you're able to output this in any other way as well. So you're able to output this, as I mentioned before, like in a display table and things like that. And so we do have a newer documentation that we will be releasing soon so it kind of talks about very similar things so we have our four different action types so i just showed you how search files looks but we have um, other ones we can also search through like graph connector content as well these are all the inputs that are required and these are the for example different outputs that we have access to so if you're able to go into like Power Automate and you're able to go see all of the output fields that are available, the 20 to 30 ones that we have. Um, these are some use cases. So after talking with a few customers, um, there's some use cases that I have documented here just to spark some ideas as well too. Um, and then we have a little bit of a common um, frequently answered question. So what is relevance? How does security privacy work? What are some examples of using external data? And then if you want to be more specific, instead of just filtering, can you like do exclude functions or things like that? You're able to use KQL in the search phrase box that I had shown over here and kind of customize it. Um, if you are more on the pro code side, I guess you're able to customize it in that sense as well. So that's a little bit about the search connector. Um, I will bring up that QR code one more time. And I also put my email in the chat in case any of you guys are interested. Um, thank you so much for um, listening and I really appreciate all that. And I'll definitely get over to the, if there are any questions in the chat, but let me just share that QR code really quick. Thank you.